Dave Parody here with another slide makeover video podcast based on the ideas in my book, The Visual Slide Revolution. In today's podcast, we're going to look at how we can illustrate the choices that uh, somebody or a group has instead of just simply listing them. And it comes from uh, this slide that is uh, adapted from a slide that I made over last week for a workshop. And in this case, what we're trying to show people is, is we're, we're showing them uh, under what circumstances do you use each of the different types of purchasing documents. And so this is a very typical type of a slide where we say, use this when, use this when, and, and we keep doing it bullet after bullet. And you can see it's an awful lot of text. And it really becomes a challenge because people don't know really how to make that distinction uh, in their own jobs because they're expected to use this information to make decisions in their own job. So here's what I did. Instead of just simply listing them, I showed the group how we could illustrate them. So here's what we did. First of all, the headline, determining what purchasing document to use. So now we know what it is we're, we're talking about. Here's how I built it. Now the first question you need to ask yourself is, is the supplier in the database and is this order for an approved product? If both of those are true, then yes, we can use a purchase order, which is a very simple document, easy to complete and uh, get out. Now, uh, if it's not that, that case, then we need to ask ourselves, look at the order is, is it from a Canadian supplier that's uh, not in the database? Is it a standard part that's already been approved, we already order it, and is the total value of the order under $5,000? If it meets all of those criteria, then we can use a standard contract. Again, a little longer than the purchase order, but it's easy to fill out because it's standard. But if we don't meet all three of those criteria, then we have to do a custom contract, and you have to get in contact with the legal department because they need to draw it up and make sure that it covers all the criteria that we need in our contracts. So you can see what I did is I used a decision tree visual to illustrate how I want these folks to make the decisions. And by using this sort of a visual, the reaction that I got from the people in the room when I did the workshop, uh, they, were, they were like, wow, this is so much easier to figure out how I'm supposed to use these documents. Now I get it. Before it was always you know, having to go back and read all the text and figure it out. So if you can illustrate it, it makes it so much easier for them. So before we get to the lessons that we want to learn from this makeover, just a reminder, for more information on the book, go to www.visualslideRevolution.com. For more information on my training, consulting, videos, other resources, go to www.thinkoutsidetheslide.com. So our lessons for showing the choices that people have instead of just simply listing them bullet by bullet. First, break down the decisions they have to make in a sequential order. So put them in an order so that they can understand what do I have to decide first, then what to, and then do what do I have to and so on so that you break them down sequentially piece by piece. Then for each of those decisions determine what question the audience should be asking. Because in a lot of cases, they don't know what the question is, so they, they're not really sure what it is they should be asking themselves. But if you can, you can determine that question, write it right down, it's easy for them to say, oh, okay, this is the question I have to ask myself. Then you need to make the criteria clear. You need to give them guidance on how they should be answering that question. What criteria do they have to satisfy in order to come up with some sort of a decision and answer to that question? And finally, in the illustration, in the decision tree diagram, show them the possible answers. So in this case, the illustration I had was simply yes or no answers, but there could be more than one answer in some cases. And when you answer that, what is the result of answering the question in that way? So in this way, we can flow the decision tree and make it easy for people to understand how to make the choices. That gives them a better ability to apply it when they actually have to do it in their own jobs. Don't keep listing them in, in paragraphs of bullet points. Show a decision tree diagram. This has been Dave Parody with another Slide Makeover video podcast.